Hi everyone, this is Sheila Butler with Successful Women Talk. I want to say thanks for joining me today. I am super, super excited because one of my favorite mentors is on the line with me. He, I think he knows he's my mentor because I follow him a bit, but I have Mr. Cliff Ravenscraft, the podcast answer man. So I am most excited. We're going to talk about, talk about, we're not going to talk about Cliff. We're going to talk to Cliff. We're going to learn about his story. We're going to talk a little about podcasting and we'll just kind of go from there. So welcome Cliff. Hey, Sheila, thank you so much. I'm so delighted to be on here. Thank you very much for introducing me to your community. Well, thank you. And I only, uh, part of the reason I have a community is because of you, because I took your A to Z podcasting course last year. It was a little bit slow to get started, but I am finally here and I love it. I'm so glad. I, it, it makes my heart sing to know that people who have gone through my course actually get out there, they launch, and they make things happen. And I, it, that's why I do what I do. Well, and you do a great job. So why don't we start with this, Cliff? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you actually got started with your business? Sure. It's a crazy story. Uh, the TV show Lost uh, basically changed my life forever. Uh, I was a, I have been blogging since blogging was, well, actually before blogging was blogging, <laughs> back in the old days of HTML pages and hand coding those things. Anyway, I had been blogging for years, and I've always been a geek and a tech head and stuff like this, but I was an insurance agent in a family-run insurance agency. I was licensed to sell auto, home, life, and health, and I was extremely successful. had been doing that for 11 years before I started my business. About two years before I started my own business, um, I came across the TV show Lost, and I got hooked on this TV <laughs> show, The Mystery. I was researching stuff. I found all this internet you know, just the crazy stuff. And I was just doing this on the side. It was fun. It was a hobby. I started blogging about some of the things I found in the show. And that started to pick up some interest. It was about that time back in 2005 that I learned about podcasting. I found that there were other podcasts about the TV show Lost. And I started calling in as a listener. <laughs> and and when I remember hearing my voice feedback played in one of those podcasts in the early days, it made me remind my, it reminded me of when I was a kid and hearing myself on the radio. I was like so excited. How cool was that? And after a while, people encouraged me, Cliff, why don't you start your own podcast? And so December 16th, 2005, I released my very first podcast episode totally as a hobby. The show was going to be called Generally Speaking. And the reason why is because I couldn't decide what to do my podcast about. Was it going to be technology? <laughs> Would it be faith? Would it be, um, you know, was it going to be about you know, the TV show Lost. Well, I did an episode, introduced uh, myself and the idea the show was going to talk about just about anything. And the first thing I did talk about was Lost. And I was blown away by the third episode of that podcast. I had 17,000 subscribers and people begging me not to podcast about anything other than Lost in that show. That's amazing. I mean, to get 17,000 followers now, it seems so hard to me because, you know, just starting out how hard that is. But I guess you found a subject that people were really passionate about. It, it was. It was actually um, there were millions of fans to, of the TV show Lost around the world. Um, it was at a time where uh, the Internet and connecting it to a television show was a, a brand new phenomenon. Uh, and not only that, but iTunes had just added podcasting. And they had also just made it to where you could start purchasing episodes after the day after they aired. So people who missed Lost would go to iTunes and search for Lost. And right below where it said, here's the TV show, here's the podcast. And uh -huh. I was right there. <laughs> and so millions of people found me by accident. And oh. actually th thousands, well, millions found me in a search result. Thousands clicked on it to find out more. That's a, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> now, from that, you took, like you said, it was a hobby, and then you actually ran with it, and you ended up, I guess, being so very passionate and loved podcasting that you learned everything about it, and you truly turned that into a business. I did. I it, Basically, I loved podcasting so much and the community that it was building. I mean, I, all of a sudden, you know, here my wife and I are talking about this TV show, and hundreds of people are emailing us, asking us questions, and I also have a background in ministry. So I, I always thought that one day I might leave my career, career in insurance to become a pastor full time. And that was kind of like a you know a hidden dream somewhere. And I found myself doing more ministry through email with this community than I had ever done in any of the years spent in the traditional you know ministry model. And so I said, you know what, I want to do more of this. I created more shows. 
Uh, and and after two years, I made the decision that I want to do this full time. Not necessarily teach people how to podcast, but I wanted to. I, I learned that what I wanted to do is I did want to entertain people. I wanted to ch- take what I was learning in life and educate others. I wanted to encourage people and I wanted to inspire people. And I wanted to leave my job in insurance where I was miserable. <laughs> and I wanted to do. I wanted to devote my life to entertainment educating, encouraging, and inspiring. And podcasting was the best way I could see to do it. Had no idea how I was going to make money. And that was January 2008. And when we say make money, you were making a really nice living doing what you were doing. Unfortunately, you were miserable. I was making $87,000 a year uh, selling insurance. I had uh, got to the place where my wife and I became completely 100% debt-free minus our mortgage. And I was absolutely miserable in my career. Oh, absolutely. there's the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, One of the that, benefits of, of working people, from home. I love that. That's okay. But, you know, that's the whole thing I love about having a video show. I know we, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But I always tell everybody it's casual. Your kids come in. Your dogs come in. It doesn't matter. That's part of life. And when you work from home, that's part of who you are. It is. Very much. Well, let me ask you this. So you didn't know, did did you know anything technically? I know you said you're kind of a geek when it comes to technology, but did you just teach yourself everything about, because you you are the podcasting guru now. I mean, if anybody knows podcasting and have a question there, your name is going to come up. So did you teach yourself every bit of that? I taught myself every bit of it. I I am a, when I was eight years old, I had a Commodore VIC-20. And I absolutely, without ever reading a manual, taught myself basic basic programming. Uh, uh, it's so, somebody you know. Somebody's told me about this thing called you know go to commands and run commands and and stuff like that. And as soon as I heard it, I went home and started typing it. And yeah, and I started taking computers apart to find out how they were put together. And and so I'm that type of person. Right. But I'm also the type of person that can take something extremely complex and say, how can I make this understandable for just about anyone? And that's something that I love to do. I love to take something that's so complex and say, let's break this down to make sure that not only can you do it, but you could you could take any high school student, give them these 27 steps and they could do it for you. And I think that's really what what inspired me about your course as well, and we will get into that also. But it you do break it down to a level to where, and I I consider myself felt fairly tech savvy, but not to the point where someone like you are at. But you know, it does help that you make it so user friendly and easy. Do these steps, and you plug and play, and you can do it. Yep. Which is that's wonderful. What, that's so what it's all about. You, you've taken not only then you created a lot of shows. You've created an entire. Uh, like a media company around it. You have many shows and a community around that. Let's talk a little bit about building that community. Sure. Well, the thing is, is that I found that one of the things that's wonderful about the internet and social media is that the only way you're really introduced to somebody online is when you share a passion with one another. Like, for example, geographically here locally, I could go to a meeting and I could be introduced to you. But chances are the only reason why why we're face to face is because uh, we're geographically connected to one another. And we happen to have been invited to this event for whatever the case may be. But the fact is, is you're going to ask me, what do I do for a living? And then we're going to talk about the weather. And the chances are, if, especially if it's a bunch of guys, they're, you're going to ask me what I think about sports. And I'm going to be the total outsider. <laughs> and I basically, you're going to find out that I could care less about your football. And I'm going to be the guy in the corner who stands by himself while you're in a circle of 18 people who are talking about what's going on with the Bengals or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I hated it. But on the internet world, in the internet world, you only connect with people that you share passions with. And so instead of finding out wh- how you think about same-sex marriage or, or your religion or all this other political junk, we don't even – that's not how we get to know each other. We get to know each other because we both are passionate about the TV show Lost. We're both passionate about Apple computing products. We're both passionate about um, you know whatever the topic may be. And, and we've found each other through this topic, through this passion. And then all of a sudden, it, it's like we develop a friendship and a relationship around something that we share in common. And it's not until maybe three, four, five months down the road before we find out that politically we're on the opposite end of the spectrum. And by that time, it doesn't matter anymore. We're already friends. That's a great point. 
Yeah, so some that, of those things just don't matter. Exactly. And, and that's what I found. It's like, you know what? I don't need to convince you that I'm right. I definitely don't want you to convince me that, I, that you're right. <laughs> and, and why can't we just get along and share what we have in common? And as a result, we have positive influence in each other's lives. All of a sudden, what you believe, if all of a sudden that seeps through and, and, and I see positive things, then all of a sudden you have a little bit more of an influence in my life. I, I kind of trust you a little bit more. I know, like, and trust you. That's what it's all about. That's that's the that's the currency today is is trust. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. And then that's what uh, you know, business is built on is is relationships and trust. You know what you're saying reminds me of the show The Voice. I love that because the the three main stars can't see the musician. They can only hear them, so they can't see what they look like. They can't see if they're overweight or not or their color or whatever, tattooed. It doesn't matter. They're only listening for one thing. So, Cliff, let me ask you this. I I think I found you through David Seitman Garland. I've been following David Seitman Garland for several years. I heard your interview with him, and I quickly started following you, and I've been following you for over a year now. Love what you do. I love your mission. I love your passion. And sometimes it's a little technical for me, but in general, I love how enthusiastic you are about your passion, which is podcasting. So what I have found, though, and I'm put, trying to put out, I, I told you I took your course, and you know that I told everybody else I took your course, but I am finding that I don't find as many women podcasting as I do men. So what is your opinion on that? Or do you, am I not finding them? I know a few, like I follow Connie and Sheila that that you're friends with and you've helped them as well. But I just don't, I don't know if it's women or because it's a technology thing or I don't know. I just kind of wanted your input on that. I definitely, I definitely see that, that overall I see men more than women in podcasting. But that, I, I see that in technology overall as well. I, I think in te- general technology, you, you, I, I see more women today than I ever have been before. Uh, I think that we're still, as a culture, we're still kind of adjusting to this, you know, I, I, I don't want to say the feminist movement or anything yeah. like that. But but the fact is, is that women are more comfortable coming out as gamers, you know, or as, you know, tech bloggers or tech enthusiasts. Uh, and, and things are changing in that area. But yeah, there's there's women out there. I mean, my wife and her best friend get together, do Authentic Life Radio. Connie and Sheila do the Connie and Sheila talk show. Um, if you go over to quickanddirtytips.com, mm-hmm. there are a ton of wonderful shows there, many of them by women producers. Uh, Mignon Fogarty, also known as Grammar Girl, Lisa B. Marshall, right. who, you know, all um, Katie Davis. I mean, there's there's women out there. Uh, but you're right. There there are more men. There there's there's no question to that. And I I just I don't think that I don't believe there is a barrier that women have to or or any hurdles that women have to get over. So there's no reason that a, a woman shouldn't have just as easy as a, of a chance to create a podcast as a man. So the whole term podcast in general is that the, sometimes that's confusing. So when I say to someone I'm I'm generating a podcast or whatever, you know, sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't. So you know, I know the terminology's been thrown around. What, what's your feeling on that podcasting versus you know what are the other terms? Well, well, well uh, let, yeah, let's talk about that because that that's a big thing. People say, well, we should change the name. This this technology that doesn't really say. Well, what's a blog? Seriously, I mean, come on. Whose parent, whose grandparents today don't know what a blog is? Everybody knows what a blog is. Well, I like I said, I was I was doing an online journal before it was called blogging, which became, by the way, an online web journal, and then it became a web log, and then it became a blog, and it became accepted as a blog when Blogger started the service called Blogger. So that's how we got blog today. Makes no sense. I don't hear people out there saying we need to change. We need to stop calling these things blogs. No, we need to embrace what a blog is and educate our audience of what a blog is. So podcasting, two thousand four, two thousand five. In two thousand five, it was Webster's Dictionary. I think it was Webster's Dictionary. One of the dictionaries. It was the word of the year. They added it to the dictionary. Really? So, so if the word is in the dictionary, why change it? I mean, if you're not going to change the phrase blog, don't change podcast. Now. Here's the thing. People think that it's so confusing, so difficult to get the world to understand what a podcast is. Here's what I do. Sheila, if I meet you face to face, I say, hey, have you ever read the book Hunger Games? And, and you would say, well, yeah, I have. 
oh, that's cool. You know, my wife and I, we do an online radio show uh, on the internet about the Hunger Games. You can find it over at HungerGamesPodcast.com. Really? So you do you do internet talk radio? Yeah, that's what I do. I do internet talk radio. My wife and I, we talk about these things and and we share our thoughts on the show. You can go find it online, click play and all of that stuff. But what happens is I didn't confuse you immediately with a term you're not uh, not familiar with. Right. I, I start communicating to you as online talk radio or internet talk radio because all of a sudden that immediately you know what that is. Right. But I slowly through the conversations, once I've gotten you to buy into what it is that I do, I stop calling it talk radio in this conversation. I will then say, and oh, and we also have some other podcasts that we do. And so I all of a sudden what I've done is subconsciously <laughs> right. made you associate the word podcast with to- online talk radio. That makes sense. You know, and I. It's been around for several years, but I see it becoming a really big thing. And only, you know, because now you've got Apple that's just come out, and I guess they've enhanced their podcast app, which um, that's questionable. In my book, still, <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. I've really tried. And then you have like things like Stitcher, and you hear about Stitcher or is going to start being in, in new cars that are being, you know, being manufactured. And I just see that it's almost just on the cusp of really getting big. What is your opinion on that? Well, in 2004, 2005, podcasting just got launched, and then it just went straight up. And then all of a sudden, it slowly went, you know, kind of, you know, plateaued it for some people. Um, you know, the curve was just this way instead of straight up. That's because it was a brand new technology. The fact that it went up so fast says, wow, this is great. So we got all the early adopters, all the tech-minded people. <laughs> it It infiltrated it. Um, and then all of a sudden, it took a while for things to go mainstream. Now, all of a sudden, t- today, I still get people saying, you know what? Six months ago, I never knew what a podcast was. And I all of a sudden, I was introduced to this podcast. I fell in love immediately. And five months ago, I launched my own show. And now I'm telling the whole world about podcasting. So this stuff is breaking into the mainstream. You've got mainstream uh, radio, mainstream television, all of these people are starting podcasts and they're telling the world. It's going to get out. Um, and, and by the way, um, so it, it started going straight up and then it kind of just sta- stayed like this. It never went flat, by the way. It's always grown. Always grown. By the way, I think it's uh, 26% of every American over the age of 18 have listened to a podcast within the last 12 months. Interesting. 26% of all Americans. Uh, over the age of 18. So it so it started like this. It's then it went like this and we're starting to see it go like this again. And I, and I do mean it it's and it's a big upward swing. And so for those people like I don't listen to I didn't know anything about a podcast until about 2 years ago. And then when I found a podcast I was amazed and now that's all I listen to. I don't watch much TV. I never listen to the to the radio. When my kids are in the car they have the the little TV going in the back, and I have my headphones in, listening to a podcast. I have a list, you know, that I listen to all the time. But some of my friends are like, "I don't have a clue what you're talking about." So, but and or why you're wanting to podcast? So, can you help me t- explain to maybe the listeners of why? What's the importance of a podcast, and what can it do for your business or your brand? Well, uh, I guess there are a couple things. Number one, the importance of a podcast is to be able to reach your audience where it's most convenient for them. So uh, I think it's 34.6 million people in America drive to and, for, to and from work alone every single day, Monday through Friday. I mean, hello, that's 30, over 36 million people. So the, And by the way, the average commute time, 26.2 minutes. And so, therefore, that's a captive audience. And, right. and by the way, the mindless dribble on radio, other people <laughs> deciding for you what they're going to play, what you're going to listen to. As soon as you hear about podcasting and it becomes pretty easy for you to get it on your mobile phone, which, by the way, who doesn't have an iPhone, an Android phone, a BlackBerry or a Windows phone today? Exactly. So, so all of these people have the ability, it, once they are educated about this technology, all of a sudden, yeah, they're going to listen to it and they're going to start. And, and by the way, if you're the person, you're the brand that introduces them to podcasting, chances are you have a lifelong fan because you have you have literally changed that person's life from that from that point forward. They are in control. It's kind of like you introduce them to the concept of a DVR for your television. 
You know, it's on demand. You listen to the content that you want to. It's free. You can listen to educational stuff that's going to radically, positively in, impact your life in, a, in an amazing way. And it's on uh, demand. And it's on demand. You listen to what you want, when you want, where you want to listen to it. The other thing is, is that it, you know, it, and I'm a huge fan of audio. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's a road you want to go down with me. But the thing it's is, not, is that it's not Cliff. Good, because <laughs> because the thing is, is um, it's it's so intimate. You know, people are listening to you while they're driving. They're listening to you while they're working out. They're listening to you while they're out walking the dog, and you're usually in their ears, both ears, and and you just have this intimate one on one conversation with them, and it's distraction free. It is, you know, it's not a blog where all of a sudden, you know, just a little, you know, one email sound, you've got, you've got mail, you know, that you don't have that stuff vying for people's attention when they're listening to your podcast, they are listening to you and they chose to listen to you. I agree. Now, what about a, a big brand that, and we've kind of talked about this before outside of off this interview, but let's say I have a children's line of furniture. And I want to do something else to maybe reach other people out there. Or and and I, I how can what kind of podcast could someone with a product based business come up with that could help their business? So I heard people saying, well, if you're selling furniture, how could you possibly have a podcast around that? Well, and and the question is 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 should you? I mean, that you have to think about what is your strategy, what is your purpose. So, for example, I have a podcast about podcasting. Um, and it, you know, it, it allows me to talk about this. People are interested in the technology and that's why they come to listen most of the time. But, um, you know, I, I guess if I, let's just say if I was a furniture person and I had this product line where you could buy these wooden toy boxes from me. Well, what I wouldn't, what I probably wouldn't do is I would think, who is my target audience? My target audience is maybe, you know, moms between the ages of this, you know, between the ages of, you know, 20 and 35. That's that's my target audience. So what I want to do is I actually want to create content that would be interesting and entertaining and educational, encouraging and inspiring for women of that age. It doesn't have to be about my toy boxes. No, but it could be of how to get people to put stuff in that toy box. <laughs> yeah, it could be about anything that is of interest that will bring people who are passionate about a topic and you become the leader of a tribe of people who are passionate about a certain thing. And and if that target audience is the same people who happen to be a perfect audience for your thing, you can say, hey, this, you know, let's just say the Hunger Games. You know, I, I do a show called The Hunger Games. You know, hey, this episode of the Hunger Games fan podcast is brought to you by mytoyboxcompany.com. You know, and, and just like, hey, at the end of the show, say, hey, if you guys are interested, uh, I'd love to tell you, just go check out my website. I, I sell these toy boxes. I mean, you can be your own sponsor. My recommendation is that if you have a business that you do not create a podcast that is nothing more than an advertisement for your business. Amen. I totally agree. Now, I, I love it. I've seen, I, I follow a few people. I've seen some new people coming on the scene with podcasting, and they're also linked with you, which, which helps me feel that podcasting is just going to continue to be a big thing in our society. You've got Michael Hyatt, and you have Michael Stelzer, Stelzer from um, – Social Media Examiner and their account. I mean, there are a lot of people out there that I now see really putting some focus into podcasting. So you make a big, and one of the things that you do is you teach a course called A to Z Podcasting, Podcasting A to Z. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that course, what it is, and how it helps people like myself. Sure. Well, I, basically, Podcasting A to Z is, um, first and foremost, it's where you can get every single one of my digital training tutorials all together for one price. Uh, and unlike people who buy them individually, uh, you get it's actually less expensive to take the four week course and get all of them included than if you were to buy them individually. Not only that, but you also have unlimited access to me for four weeks in an online forum. So basically, I give you access to a private online forum where night or day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can ask questions and I will answer every single question you ask in that forum yes, he for will. four <laughs> full weeks. I devote, I clear my life <laughs> to, to answer your questions. I am there. So if you get stuck in a tutorial and it's like, hey, I, I tried this, but I just don't see this button, I will give you the answer you're looking for. And then every, well, at, at the end of every week, we do a group coaching call. 
And so basically it's like a webinar every week for four weeks. You get on with all the other students, maximum of 30 students in a course. Usually there's about 20. Uh, and we, you ask questions, and I answer questions. It's scheduled for a minimum of an hour. I've stayed as long as two and a half hours before answering until every question has been answered, and, and that's what you get. So basically you get all my tutorials, you get four weeks of ask, access to ask me questions, and you also get four online group training calls. And here's the deal. My success ratio is nine out of ten of all of my students, and I've had over 150 students now, nine out of 10 of them successfully create more than 10 episodes of their podcast. And, and statistics say that a majority of podcasters quit on or before their seventh episode. Not so with my students. I was excited to get past seven because I remembered that in the course. Like when I hit 10, I was doing a little celebration over here with myself. Yes, absolutely. The happy dance. And you know, another thing is a nice thing about that also, Cliff, is that you have lifetime access to that, to the to the material. Hence the fact I just went back this last week and I'm now going back through some of the material um, for different reasons. And so that's important, I think, because you, maybe you miss things, but that stuff is out there for you. Yeah, the, the access to the forum is lifetime, so you can sign back in. The materials are yours forever. You can go back. As a matter of fact, there's more ter- there's more materials than you can get through in four weeks. Uh, and, and it's just because I give you everything. I, it's like, why just give you some? I'll give you way more than you need. And, and like you, and it's been a year since you've been in there. And, and you can still go and do it, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And th- the thing is, is that the only thing is, is that after four weeks, you can no longer ask questions. Right. You know, you don't post anything in the forum after four weeks. But you still have lifetime access to what was posted during those four weeks. So you, it's like, oh, I remember asking Cliff that question. I, I, what was his answer? And you can go back and find it. But here's the other thing. There's up to 20 or 30 students in your course. All of them asked questions. And you sure, certainly couldn't keep up with everybody else's questions and all the answers I gave. But over time, you can sign back in and say, I wonder what other people asked. And you just devote a day to, to seeing the, oh, I wish I would have thought to ask that. That's a, wow, that's good information right there. So yeah, it's a ton of value. And a lot of people have uh, really enjoyed podcasting A to Z. It's a good course. I recommend it. And I'm not getting paid by recommending it. I'm just saying that it is a really good course. If podcasting is something that you're interested in, Cliff is the person to go to. He has a wonderful podcast. And I've listened to, I've gone back and listened to almost every episode that you've ever put out. I have to say I was a bit saddened lately. I think you went to only one time a week. And I'm, I'm learning to deal with that. <laughs> Finally. It's tough. You and David Seitman Garland both one time a week. I guess that's what happens when you... Well, well, here's the cool thing. Since December 2005, I don't know if you know this, Sheila, but I have over 3,000 podcast episodes. So if you are ever in trouble and you need to hear some Cliff Ravenscraft entertainment, <laughs> education, encouragement, inspiration, just hit, send me an email and I'll send you a link to the special site where you can have access to all 3,000 episodes. I'm going to find me some Cliff. Well, listen, I appreciate you spending some time with us today. I hope that we've encouraged one person to get out and listen to what a podcast is. Give it a try. There's so much. There's such a a wealth of information out there. And then you can, you know, be like you you and I. You just start out as, you know, I started out not 100% sure what I was going to do. I absolutely love it. And uh, I think it's a great media tool for me for my other business. And, um, you know, same thing with with your program. I appreciate all you do, Cliff. Thank you so much, Sheila. I'm so delighted to see what you're doing. You're doing an amazing job, and and it's it's so cool to see so somebody like you who gets out there who understands social media and is doing it right. I and by the way, anybody listening to this, if you decide you want to get into this stuff, follow follow Sheila on Facebook, on Twitter, and sign up for her newsletters and and anything else that she's doing. Subscribe to everything and just watch her. I mean, she's a great example to follow. You follow her. You're going to be, you've, you, you've got, she's blazing the trail ahead of you. So good stuff there. Thank you, Cliff. And if someone wanted to hook up with you, where would you want to send them? Uh, the first place is learnhowtopodcast.com. Uh, learnhowtopodcast.com. It is absolutely 100% free. It is the best tutorial I've ever created in my life. And I don't even ask you for your email address. 
I figure if you like me, you're going to seek me out. And if you don't like me, I don't certainly don't want to bother you in your email. So I learn how that. to podcast.com. Learn how to podcast.com. We will hook that up. We'll link it up in the show notes. We'll link your website up in the show notes. Cliff, you are a true inspiration and I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Sheila. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, that's a wrap on this episode. Thank you again so much for joining me. And I ask that you go over to our website, www.successfulwomentalk.com. Join our community by signing up for the email list. This is the way that our community and show continues to grow. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you in the next interview.